Welcome to the admissions chat for the Bachelor of Fine Arts at the Academy of Fine Arts in Helsinki, Finland. Today we're going to chat everything admission, bachelor related, portfolios, admission course, all of this fun jazz. And audience, if you have any questions, pop them straight into the chat and we'll answer them along the way. So to start off, let's do a little round of introductions. Maybe we'll go this way. So tell who you are, what you do in the uni, where you're from. Yeah. yeah. So my name is Jakko Ati and I'm working here at the Academy of Fine Arts as the planning officer of student admissions. So my job is to uh, plan and coordinate the student admissions processes here in the school. My name is Ellie. I'm originally from Australia and I am a graduating bachelor student in the printmaking department and I do a lot of science arts. Uh, I am uh, Anastasia. Um, I am a third year bachelor student uh, in printmaking. Originally I'm from Russia. Um, and my name is Nora Shomosh. Um, I'm from Hungary and a student, second year student in the BFA program, and I'm in the painting department. Nice. Yes. So I think we'll start off with talking about studies. So Noria and Asia, what do you what do you study? What department are you in? What are you studying at the moment? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like this time? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Um, so about studies. Yeah. So as I said, I'm in the painting department and second year. Um, <laughs> sorry, what else? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like, can you tell a little bit about what the structure of your degree program is? Oh yeah, been? of course. Yeah. yeah. So this is the f fine arts. Um, mm -hmm first like the BA program and then the MA, it's like um, together. So you can, you only have to apply once. And basically your first, our first semester is this introductory period where uh, the whole year is together for one semester. And we have these very structured courses and kind of like introduction to all the subject areas, which are the painting, printmaking, time and space and sculpture. And then at the end of the first semester, you choose which one to go to study in. And then from then, like the, from the second semester, it's like normal <laughs> university life, I guess. So. Yeah, I'm studying in printmaking. Actually, my first two years I studied in the Department of Time and Space. So it's my first year in printmaking now. And, uh, well, third year of the bachelor program. I'll be uh, participating in the bachelor show next uh, autumn and then also graduating after that uh, from the bachelors. Uh, yeah. So I do a bit of, um, well, different things. I do a bit of photography and I work with neural networks uh, from there um, and also a bit of textiles and um, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. And what does like your kind of like day to day look like? Do you have like theory classes or are you just doing art all day? Mm. I would say that I have kind of three typical days now when I think about it. Uh, so some courses are really kind of workshop based. So uh, they're like nine to five every day for like a week or two. Uh, but then some courses are especially more theoretical ones are just uh, kind of maybe once or twice a week for a couple of hours. So my first typical day is that I just come for this like uh, workshop based course for like uh, from nine to five and then I go home and maybe work. Uh, and uh, my second day is that uh, either in the morning or in the afternoon, I work on my artistic projects and somewhere uh, 
in the middle of the day or maybe towards the end I have some theoretical courses and then also sometimes I have kind of uh, days without any courses when I just come to my studio and work on my projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of similar for me as well. Um, well, I mostly take painting courses and they're like, they're similar. The practical courses are always intensive and they take like a week or two or some maybe a month even. And then you, most days you come and work in the school like all day. And then, um, yeah, and then the theory is like all throughout the semester, usually once a week or something. Yeah, and, and then you do your, or I do my um, independent work in the studio. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes it's hard to navigate like uh, how, much t how much work do you put into your course and then your own artistic work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, that's a rough part of. Yeah. My next question is like, what made you choose the painting department and what made you switch from time and space to, to the printmaking department? Yeah, well, um, at first I chose time and space because I uh, work mainly with um, installations or I combine different things into installations. So I thought that uh, that would be kind of like a good place for me. And I really enjoyed my studies there as well. Uh, mm, but basically like, mm, despite choosing the department, we can still quite freely uh, like choose the courses from other departments as well. So even though now I'm in printmaking, I can still take the uh, courses from, um, uh, well, painting or any other department. Uh, but I thought that I would like to participate in another seminar and see how uh, people in printmaking talk about art because that's what I feel is really different among different uh, uh, departments. It's mostly about like what kind of discussions from what kind of perspective it comes from. So um, in the bachelor uh, for me it was quite uh, easy to change the department uh, so I wanted to try it out and I really like it there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, uh, like you said, the main difference is kind of how the different departments approach art, especially in the seminars. So, yeah, I, I mean, I chose painting because I work with painting and it was a very simple decision for me. I, d I don't really have a lot to add, but I like, I like painting department. There is a, um, a lot of like um, technical discussion, I feel like, and then one semester, like one term, I had a um, joint studies seminar where like everyone approached very like conceptually er everything. So that was interesting. I think in painting sometimes it, it can get very technical and very like down to the material. And mm. Yeah, but it's it's nice. I, I like that. Yako, give us the lowdown on admissions. What is the admission process like? What are the important dates? What happens in this admission process? Yeah, so um, the student admissions to the um, uh, fine arts degree program, the combined bachelor's and master's is organized annually. And the uh, first step is the application um, period, which is in January. The application period starts January 3rd and then runs two weeks until the 17th. And um, the admission process is, well, um, to sim simply put, it's uh, divided into two phases. So the first phase is the um, application period in January when you submit your electronic application and all of the um, needed documents and appendices and then um, and then applicants who are invited to take part in the admission course, that is the second phase, the admission course is then happening in May. So, um, 
but at the very first phase in January, you are requested to submit, um, well, paperwork and certificates to prove your educational background and language proficiency, as well as um, um, application materials that include a portfolio and a motivation letter. And all of the application instructions and admission criteria are detailed in the admissions guide, which is on, on the university website. Um, so, yeah, be, pre be prepared and, and check them well in advance before January, especially in case you need to get, for instance, a language test certificate or, or anything, or any kind of paperwork or uh, degree certificate from, from your earlier education. And um, also, well, maybe we can touch, touch up on the portfolio a bit later on, but roughly speaking, the advanced uh, assignment is uh, the work portfolio aims to, is your chance to present your artistic practice in the form of, of images and uh, documentation of your work. And then the motivation letter, there's some specific questions that you're requested to answer there. And all of that material is submitted electronically through this studyinfo.fi portal. Um, and then usually perhaps, let's say, 50 to 60 applicants are then asked to um, continue in the process and are invited to the admission course. And, um, well, the admission course is a um, week-long course from Monday to Friday where the applicants are given an assignment and also they meet the admission jury. Uh, and we'll have an interview with them. And um, after that, uh, May 31st is the day when we publish the de decisions of the admissions. And uh, yeah, new, new students start their study uh, with the orientation that usually is at the end of August. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the outline of, <laughs> of the process. Yeah. What a long process. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Very. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so let's like talk a little bit about your experiences of this process because you've like both been through it. Um, so let's start with uh, portfolio and maybe motivation letter. Like how did you approach making this portfolio and motivation letter? And do we have any like advice? Because I know this can be a pretty like hard, like how do you make a portfolio? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how was it? I mean, it's an open question. <laughs> how do you make a portfolio? Um, it. I think they have a strict limitation of. It was maybe eight pages or something. Even maybe yeah. even less when it's, I. I um, it's you can present eight individual artworks oh, mm -hmm. okay. in the portfolio, and then there's like um, the page limit is ten, ten pages. So. You can have um, one to three pictures of each works, but uh, it's it's anyway um, short, short presentation. You yeah. have to make hard yeah. decisions mm -hmm. and cuts exactly. there. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, we were discussing that one advice. One, one advice might be that um, exactly because it has to be short, like uh, maybe stick with what you think is your good work and mm. um, not to try to include everything you've ever done. Um, I don't know, For it, it kind of really depends on what's your artistic practice, so it's hard to give, give advice, like hard to give generic advice. Yeah, uh, like when I applied with my portfolio it was quite versatile and I was a bit worried that is it so that like I had to have like something actually quite specific in my portfolio or um, mm, I don't know if I should write a text or not but in the end uh, I just tried to kind of choose the works that I was proud of and that I could explain really well 
and that I thought that uh, I really like them and people around me like them quite a lot. So I want to also show them uh, in the admissions. Yeah, so yeah, I think that I just try to kind of like put things that uh, I think represent me in some sense and uh, represented my artistic practice at that point of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember writing this motivation letter as well? Was that <laughs> how was that? <laughs> I don't remember so much. Uh, I wrote it. It was for me like the last thing that I did. Uh, it was like right before the deadline. So don't do that. <laughs> That's what I should no. say. Uh, yeah. Uh, but um, there, I think that I also just kind of I was really thinking, who am I as a person? And mm -hmm how I want people like uh, to kind of see me truthfully in a way and uh, I was trying to write from that perspective and then in uh, when I applied we also had to kind of describe one of the works mm -hmm. uh, so that's where I also kind of tried to put I don't know my personality in in a way <laughs> yeah I think I had a. I think I wrote a re really simple motivational letter. I don't. I don't like nothing special to mm -hmm. be honest. <laughs> yeah, but I, I actually like I applied twice. I got in on the second round, second year, and um, the first time I didn't get to the admission course. So I had one portfolio that failed. So I think one advice that I can give to maybe someone who is from a different country like I had very different idea of how a portfolio should look like as I was uh, like living in Hungary and there it's very uh, important to put like your like skill like how you, you can draw anatomy and you know like um, they all I, that's kind of what I thought that I have to do and I did I had I it was uh, not all my individual work. I put like paintings of portraits that I did and I don't know why I did like, I just assume that that's not the style of this, <laughs> this country. So. But I, I wouldn't have known any better. So just like everyone just stick to your good individual work and you don't have to show your drawing skills or yeah, I was quite lucky that I had some people who uh, were studying here to ask uh, or who knew about this university a bit more because I like in Russia it's also like the technical skills are much more important than everything else, especially when you apply to an art school. So uh, I just like um, I asked those people like what what. Uh, is this school about and it seemed like it was more about actually just kind of this personal artistic practice and uh, maybe a bit uh, more like showing creativity rather than um, technical skill mm -hmm. of course technical skill is also important but the like for me I felt that with I, less, less yeah important. a bit less yeah do you want to add anything on the portfolio? Yeah, I, I mean, I think those insights were really good, good and helpful, and I, I agree <laughs> with them. Maybe one thing that I could also add is that is is good to um, keep the portfolio well, very simple and concise. Because I mean, the ad admission jury that goes through the applications review hundreds and hundreds of portfolios. So. Be sure to make it easily accessible, and uh, um, I think it's good, as you as you mentioned, to really approach it um, so that you you think about it from the perspective of how, how you could really just clearly present your personality and your own personal approach. It's the instructions are pretty free form, <laughs> so that can be challenging to many to give so much, you know, freedom of how to approach it. But I think it's good to just, you know, stick to what you know best and um, 
it doesn't have to be very kind of formal and strict. Just, you know, make sure that it reflects you. <laughs> yeah. And then moving on to the admission process. And we mentioned before that, like, you had different experiences of the admission process because yours was online mm -hmm. uh, during that online time. Then yours was in the university. Um, how was this admission process? What happened? And do you have any advice? Yeah, well, uh, my admission uh, process was still during COVID, so that's why it was online. Um, I mean, for me back then, it was quite helpful because I was at the same time as the admissions uh, doing my um, like uh, final exams from high school. <laughs> so it was quite a stressful week. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, for me, we were giving we were given quite a free task, like free for interpretation. Uh, and we were free to do basically anything around this task. So uh, it was like uh, um, a working week. So we started on Monday and on Friday we had to submit uh, our works. Yeah, so then I just made a work and the documented it and sent it. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's really different uh, when you are at the school, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I could have done it online. I think, I think it's best to be, be here. Um, yeah, so, uh, well, first of all, I had to fly in for the admission course. I think there was no option of doing it online, as far as I can recall. I don't know if it changed or anything, but... I uh, know, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, um, the basic structure was the same. We had one week, and then on Friday, you just have had to leave all your work that you've done, kind of like on display. Um, and um, we had, I think, four or five prompts for the tasks. Like, um, there, were, there were five different kind of clues or like hints of some tasks that you have to like, like, like starting points. And I think you could, like you, you could do either all of them or just one of them, or like it was very free still, but there were multiple starting points. And yeah, yeah, I was extremely nervous. I couldn't sleep before and so I had a horrible time, <laughs> but, <laughs> but then uh, I think like from the second day, it was really nice. It was extremely relaxed. Like we were just left to do anything. Like um, you just kind of work on your own. Everyone is in the same room or not everyone, like 10 people are in the same room at once. And then you just work on your own and you have to bring everything for yourself, like so, like things to do your art with. Yeah, so I think someone even had a printer or something like that. <gasps> like mm. you really yeah. have to think in advance about mm. what to take, what your your canvas, everything. But you don't have to be here for it. Like you can go home if you live here or whatever. Just you don't have to be here all the all week. And then there is the short interview. Did you have an interview? Oh, yeah, Sorry. yeah. There is like a 10 minute interview also. Yeah, it felt really fast. Like I just, it, it felt like I just started to speak and it already ended. But it was, yeah, uh, it was uh, maybe also because I was just a bit nervous and mm -hmm. the time flew so fast. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I also had that. Yeah. Oh, and, and uh, I remembered also that we had to take some of the works from the portfolio. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. maybe three works we had to present. Yeah. yeah, in the admission course that is organized live, um, if you are um, invited to the admission course, you should bring, I think it's um, two, 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 three works that you presented earlier in your portfolio. Uh, with you to the admission course um, so that the jury can then have a look at those same works. But you can choose freely. Of course, you should consider if you have very kind of um, 
big works or let's see like <laughs> ephemeral <laughs> works how what do you want to bring with you because you should be able to take them with you and transport them and also they are to be kept in the in your workspace so don't bring anything too huge because that's going to eat away your yeah. <laughs> work working space in the in the studios but i remember that i just brought a print of a big painting because mm -hmm. i i was flying here yeah and uh, yeah i think i had like a smaller one from the portfolio and then i had two prints so it's also okay to take like a documentation yeah and if for instance if you're working with moving image or installation that might be like impossible to move yeah, <laughs> you course. can then just bring documentation or other mm -hmm. material with you yeah, yeah that's that's um, good good to mention you can also kind of keep that in mind when you compile compile the portfolio but also as a as a tip in the um, admissions guide um, there's a link to old um, this like admission course prompts from past years so you can have a look at them they're usually pretty free free form and as you said um, the kind of media or what whatever material that you use to do the artwork is usually free free to choose so um, also keep keep an open mind and you can of course approach it as as you wish and get materials during the week if you need because probably you would form an idea of the artwork only after you get the prompt so you maybe cannot prepare for every every scenario mm -hmm. Super great tips for portfolio and admission. I hope that was this has been helpful so far. And like all of there's like tons of information on the Uni Arts website. It's like uniarts.fi slash apply. On the page there's I think a link that's titled study here. Mm -hmm. And under that you can find the admissions guide. So just find the yeah. find the fine arts degree programs admissions guide and yeah. Um, I'm just reminded to our audience, if you have any questions, write them in the chat and we can answer them. Um, moving on to another topic, language. We're in Finland and we're talking English. Do you speak Finnish? Is there English language options here? Can you, what language can you study in? Yeah. When, you, when you apply, you can uh, apply in uh, Finnish, Swedish or English. So when you apply, you can apply as an English language uh, students of course if you depends on what kind of prior schooling it depends if you can prove your language proficiency with um, with your high school certificates or whatever or if you need to take a language test that's depends on your situation but um, you can apply even if you don't speak Finnish uh, but uh, yeah maybe you can Tell tell uh, your your uh, both English language mm -hmm. students so you can tell about what is the day to day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the study. So uh, yeah, I applied with uh, as like an English uh, speaker, and I've done my high school in English. So my high school diploma like uh, proved my language proficiency in that sense. Um, yeah, but. Um, I feel like um, uh, language in uni arts is a really interesting like thing because there are quite a lot of courses that are uh, in English or that are organized in a way that if there is one person who doesn't speak Finnish, then everyone speaks English. But there are also quite a lot of courses that are uh, only for Finnish speakers and you can only get to them uh, if uh, you're studying in Finnish uh, or you speak Finnish really well. Uh, so uh, because of that, I'm uh, learning the language. Um, and I actually did my Finnish test and I got the results that I passed them, uh, or <laughs> like all the parts. So uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm quite interested in uh, a lot of uh, Finnish speaking courses. So I want to also check them. Yeah, well, it's not the only reason the courses, but <laughs> one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's good to speak Finnish, to try to learn. I'm also trying to learn. 
Yeah, now I took this Finnish seminar, for example, and it's been really difficult. Um, but yeah, um, about the admissions, I, I had to take this language exam, the IELTS, and for anyone who is international and has to take that, you have to really think about it in advance because it takes a really long time to even get an appointment to do it in your own country. And then like, and it also expires in two years. So mm. it's like, <laughs> and it's yeah. very expensive. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. so it's like, <laughs> great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I took that test and I, I, my study language is also English. And um, well, I'm not, I don't think I will ch change it, but I'm still trying to learn Finnish because especially in painting, it's um, very common to have a course only in Finnish. And, um, and uh, I got the advice actually that I should just take, um, I should just take any course that I want and then talk to the teacher. So it could work that if you talk to the teacher that, hey, I'm trying my best, but I really want this course. So I think it could work. Like, I think very often it's kind of like in both languages, like, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, an idea, idea just came to mind as well. I remember Suzanne Rooney was saying that like sometimes she uses her like Google Translate, like the mm -hmm. live Google Translate to go from like a Finnish person speaking to English text. So I think maybe this could also make like these Finnish courses more accessible. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know if anybody's tried that yet. I, I am uh, always like on the Google Translate, like typing the words I hear like trying to get words because I have some basic knowledge of Finnish at this point and so it's like getting a bit easier but to study fine arts in Finnish is like not the same as going to the restaurant and ordering. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, like the theoretical parts I feel like would be quite different because there is of course a lot of theoretical studies and some of these theoretical studies are only in Finnish mm -hmm. and of course it depends a lot on kind of like your um, uh, in a way language proficiency because if the course is more technical then uh, even with like uh, quite uh, like uh, low uh, language proficiency you can still go and see what the like a teacher is doing and understand what's going on but if it's something like more theoretical then i feel like mm -hmm. i would need more training with that exactly yeah yeah i think it's important to highlight that even though you apply as a finnish swedish or english speaker since all of the students are in the same degree program and they're not divided into strict groups based on language is that uh, in any scenario you're probably in a, you have to use multiple languages also if you're a Finnish speaker you probably you know you cannot finish your schooling without using using English with your study mates and during seminars so that's that's worthwhile to mention that it's uh, kind of um, um, kind of um, hodgepodge of languages for all for all students yeah. usually. Yeah, yeah, good for the brain. <laughs> mm, there's Definitely. good, there's yeah, good side to it. <laughs> it can be like emotionally hard a little bit to mm. not understand, and like sometimes we would I think try to put ourselves in the back, like you know, just leave. Mm. But yeah, I have to like remind myself that oh I have the same rights to study here and mm -hmm. uh, like everyone else and like good to remember that. But I feel like learning Finnish is uh, really helpful in any way because um, I feel like at least uh, when it comes to thinking about uh, what to do after graduation, how to apply for grants and everything like that, I feel like uh, knowing even a bit of Finnish gives you quite an advantage, uh, especially when it comes to like getting jobs. So um, that's also like one of my motivations to really put effort into learning that. Uh, and generally, I feel like it's um, 
much easier like uh, to get by in day-to-day -day life when you can understand at least something uh, and you can speak uh, something as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's a really good point I feel like now we're like talking about like the very start of admissions and very start of bachelor but then there's like the whole artistic life after yeah mm. yeah yeah um next topic how are you surviving financially are you managing to work alongside <laughs> your degree or like are you just here like 12 hours a day what's like your time work work balance structure Oh, I wish I could be here like 12, t 12 <laughs> hours a day. Um, uh, I work part-time, uh, hourly based job at university mm -hmm. as a student ambassador, mm -hmm. along with Ellie. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, for me, uh, it's been quite okay to manage work and studies at the same time, uh, but um, I feel like it's also partly because of this kind of, there isn't a specific schedule for every day in university, so it's not like you spend here every day from nine to five, maybe only the first semester. Uh, but then it's quite uh, manageable to uh, see what kind of courses you're gonna have in the next semester, what kind of uh, schedules you would have for each uh, month and then decide what kind of availability for work you also have. Yeah, but surviving financially is quite a question. I'm a non-EU student, I have to pay my tuition fee. Uh, so it's um, difficult <laughs> and Finland isn't the cheapest country as well. But um, there are quite a lot of like, uh, ways to get around like uh, there is um, well, the student housing uh, horse so the uh, housing is a bit cheaper than the market price and uh, then it depends a lot on what kind of area in Helsinki you live in but you can find really cheap apartments I just can say that <laughs> yeah um, yeah uh, but yeah. And do you know like how many hours you need to work per week to get by? Um, well, I would say that for me so far, the bare minimum has been like 10 hours mm -hmm. a week. It's possible to also find like a part time job elsewhere, but I'm not uh, quite sure about that. And of course, uh, in uh, Finland, it's quite uh, or like for me, at least I feel it's quite common to have a summer job, uh, which is usually full time. And then uh, you can earn quite some money to get by for like a couple months uh, afterwards. Like it's quite possible to save from that. So for example, this summer I had a full time job and I was able to uh, save for still a couple of months of uh, studying. Yeah. Yes, I I also worked in the summer and I haven't yet worked during the studies. Um, um, but maybe I will. I don't know. I know a lot of people who do like part time work. Uh, but I haven't yet done it like during the like autumn semester or spring. Yeah, but summer summer job is good. You can make a lot of money, I guess, mm -hmm. in the summer. Yeah, and a bit of experience as well. I feel like as soon as you have like one finished job <laughs> on your CV, then it's a bit easier yeah. later on. That's true. I, I also like, uh, I came to this school expecting that I would get the Kala benefits mm -hmm. and then I found out that I can't. So I would advise everyone to really look into that mm -hmm. um I, I i think i looked pretty well but still i like i misunderstood i guess a lot of things and it's not very easy so yeah and then how is how is moving to helsinki and how is helsinki finland 
Mm. Yeah, I don't have like a um, an interesting story because I lived in Finland before coming to the school. I lived in a, a small town, Lahti. It's like 100 kilometers away from Helsinki. Um, so for me, Finland wasn't like super new by that point. I've lived uh, there for three years. Um, then now it's been five years. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, at first uh, Helsinki was a bit overwhelming for me. It always like there are so many events and things going on. And um, I live um, in the east of Helsinki, so I have to commute every day, um, which was really different from uh, my life in Lahti. But um, yeah, I pretty quickly found an apartment. Uh, I live with my partner and uh, it was quite easy to find an apartment uh, that like um, would um, be quite cheap uh, because we were uh, also looking outside, uh, like outside of the city center of Helsinki, which I would recommend to do <laughs> with people with limited budget. Yeah, because it's just like a short commute. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I also spent some time in Finland before. Um, not directly before moving to study in this school. I, I had like a one year in high school um, here in Helsinki. And then this time when I moved for this school, um, I think it was quite uh, difficult for me adjusting. And I had a really tough time the first semester because my life changed so much in such a short amount of time that it was kind of really taking a toll on me <laughs> but uh, so I think it just takes a long time to really to get settled and and that's when you can really kind of start doing your art because I think it's that was really difficult to kind of like this big chaos and everything is new and uh, yeah that's a uh, first the first half year or year is really tough um, but I like Helsinki a lot. I think it's very not not like a doesn't have a big city feel, but still it's capital city. There is things happening, so I I like that because I'm not much of a like big city person. And yeah, I lived in many areas of Helsinki already. I moved quite a lot. Um, I also lived in. Well, I I just moved out. Of, of Hoas, but I lived in two different student housing, so have experience with that too. And yeah, I think living like in the east is really nice, and and it's 15 minutes on the metro. It's really not that far. Yeah. So if like people for limited budget, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's I, I really liked living there. Yeah, the first half a year for me was also quite tough because in uh, this like first semester there is Mulu when you get kind of like introduction to all of the departments and then you also have to manage that you just moved and you're already quite stressed and then you still have to like go to school every day from nine to four uh, but um, it's also quite uh, nice that uh, you get like mm, to do something every day uh, in that period. Yeah, yeah. it was nice, Müller. It was really nice. Yeah. And, and then we had the trip. Mm. So <laughs> we went to Copenhagen. Oh, Where wow. did you go somewhere? Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, we went to Finnish countryside because we were the COVID kids. The COVID years. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Mulu is nice, but really rough, mm -hmm. very busy. Yeah, you get to meet like all of uh, like your classmates and spend a lot of time with them. So it's kind of like nice community building in that sense. But it's also quite tough because it's so fast paced. You, we only had around two weeks per each department and uh, 
you still like you still get some assignments and you do something so it's like yeah was quite an experience <laughs> and then like the like the second semester after Mulu, I, I feel like all my classmates and me we were all like just like mm -hmm. shaken from Mulu. like everyone was like trying to find what to do because there in the first semester it's kind of like you do everything mm -hmm. and then it was I think for everyone it was pretty difficult to then try to kind of build some practice like build like the everyday life but now it's good now it's when it settles <laughs> that you can yeah. work better I feel like yeah cool it's kind of time to like wrap up thank you thank you both so much all of you um and if there's like any questions from the audience that are admission oh do we have one yeah, yeah. So the question is, can you share more about your student life and the community in the university? Yeah. Um, it's a difficult question now when I think about it. Um, I feel like there is really strong community, but we don't have, or at least not uh, yet that many like community events or things to bring people together. Now I feel like it's changing bit by bit, but when I just arrived it uh, wasn't um, like that. Yeah. Do we have any other uh, audience questions? So the question is, what's what's your independent artistic practice like? Do you get credits for it? And what are the facilities like in the university? Um, so basically, there are mandatory courses. Um, you have to get a certain amount of credits uh, for, for example, some theory courses, and then also some other like practical, maybe, are there any? Yes. No, well, there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is like uh, this study guide where you can see what are the mandatory courses and and then you have to do a certain amount of independent work every semester so that you have about 30 credits every semester like all together. And uh, you can do also a lot of courses and you can choose to get like just a few independent credits and to get a lot of credits from courses, or you can choose to do fewer courses and do a lot of your independent work. So it's kind of like that. And we all have studios. Everyone gets studio. So you can work there. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, like, I think that to graduate uh, on time, there is kind of like this goal that you have to have around 30 credits per each semester and uh, this can consist of independent artistic practice or um, or courses and I feel like it's for me it's been quite kind of 50 50 the amount of independent artistic work that I do and the courses that I take uh, but uh, it's quite easy to kind of like schedule things yourself and see um, how much you want to work and on what in each particular semester. Uh, so um, independent artistic work is really like an interesting concept because you don't only like um, get credits from just like actually working on your works but all the kind of like invisible work also counts as such. So like, for example, uh, going to exhibitions, to artist talks, uh, like thinking about the concepts um, and just planning your work uh, also counts as such, which was quite a nice surprise for me that it's not only just working, but also everything that uh, like comes uh, with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we didn't get to chat too much about facilities, but we've made a tour video yeah. of the whole academy. So watch that. It's on YouTube. Yeah, I think it's a really nice tour video. Yeah. We get to see a lot of the a lot of the building. Do we? Is that the end of the questions? Do we have any more? 
that's that's it. And if any questions pop up after this, you can email admissions if they're admission related questions. And you can also email our student ambassadors if you have more questions about student life. So we encourage to ask everything and anything beforehand. It's always better to ask yeah. if you're unsure about yeah. anything before before you submit your application. Yeah, ask away. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you to the audience. Bye. Bye.